Let's move on to the X Division, I suppose, in which, again, you can't get away from it, Liam. Two AJ Styles and Jerry Lynn matches. <laughs> okay, no more. I'm putting a hard pan on this. No more AJ Styles and Jerry Lynn matches. But the thing that scares me is the blow-off, quotation marks, I don't know, involve cheating. So that makes me think there's going to be another AJ Styles-Jerry Lynn match. So yeah, on pay-per-view number 20, uh, Lynn defeated Styles to win the X Division title, which they're really hot potatoing that X Division title around by the way yeah but i guess that's kind of the point it's the belt that's gonna you're gonna get a title change every now and again do they have to do so many of them though i guess the idea is like tune in every week because you don't know if the x title will change one two three four five six listen i'm not saying it's good (laughs) but i'm saying that there is probably method to the madness this is the sixth title change since the beginning of this company i don't mind that he got a title change got a title run rather Jerry Lynn is the second person to hold the belt twice already. After? AJ. <laughs> yes, of course. So yeah, they had their first match. Both matches were very good. I still think the best match they've had is like the final portion of the first x title match. I don't think they've lived up to that match since. They still had two very good title matches this month. Yeah, I enjoyed both of these. I actually really liked the blow-off quotation marks until the end. Yeah, they, they worked a very different intensity to it, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Which was, like, because they have to, because they've run this match fucking 25 times on 24 shows. There was this great moment where AJ tried to run off the steps to do a Rana, and Lynn just hurled him into the uh, the steel <laughs> rail without any stopping. It wasn't like he caught him and he waited a moment and he hit him on the rail. It's like, AJ jumped off the steps, tried to Rana, and Lynn just carried the momentum through to the rail. It rocked. And it was interesting that, um... On the blow-off quotation marks, they did, like, a recap of each guy. And in that recap, they chose to put in the Jerry Lynn being a mean vet guy. So mm. that played into the the more aggressive tone of the, the match, I guess. Throughout the month, we had the debut of Crimson Dragon. Fuck off. <laughs> well, what a glow-up in one week, huh? Yeah, because he went from... It was a Crimson Dragon against Jorge Estrada against AJ Styles match on NWA and I paper number 22. So it was actually a pretty... You know, actually, no, it was a bad match. I remember I hated it. Don't worry about you, it. I'll take it all back. You detested that match with every fiber of your being. But Crimson Dragon <laughs> looked like he, he's like the prototype version of Amazing Red. It's just like, this was what Red should look like if Red looked like the worst, horrible amateur indie wrestler you've ever seen in your life. He looks like when you make a creator wrestler, but you don't have a lot of time and you just want to fuck around with moves. <laughs> so you have like... You spend like five minutes on it. If you remember the TNA game, that story mode was filled with matches against a bunch of creator wrestlers while you were like coming up in Mexico. Oh, that, that was that was straight up a 2K19 my career guy that you fight at the start. Yeah, and on the indies, it's just like this is the indie wrestler in this game that they haven't bothered putting time into creating a different decent creator wrestler model for. But I like that they clearly understood because this is a TNA gimmick, right? Like this guy didn't do this mm. outside of TNA. He barely did it in TNA. Yeah, they they looked like he's like, oh, he looks like shit. So they got him some good gear for the next show. <laughs> it's actually funny in the wrestling observer. Dave, Mel- Dave Meltzer always mentions that because it's Chris Hamrick who plays the Crimson Dragon, not to unmask somebody again, but. <laughs> Dave is mentioning how it's like, oh, going all the way back to the 80s, this guy has always been a good worker who can't get a break because of how he looks. So that's this was their solution: put a mask on him. Yeah, and to be fair, the second goal of the look was actually pretty good. He basically looked like a mini Super Dragon. <laughs> yeah, he looked like Super Dragon met meets Ultimo Dragon. Yeah. It was really, it was, it was kind of interesting. It's kind of cool. It's funny that I'd imagine the first week they're like, hey, you're booked. We want you to do this Crimson Dragon character. Get some gear together. And he's like, oh, uh, 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 okay. And this is what he could desperately throw together. And then the next week he comes back. He's like, all right, you know, I'm Crimson Dragon. I'm, I'm really going to invest in this character. I'm going to get myself some nice gear. I'm going to really commit to it. And he comes back. He loses the Siaki, but he has this cool gear. It's a perfectly fine little match. And then Crimson Dragon never wrestles in TNA again. <laughs> I would buy the Crimson Dragon gear if someone is selling it. The second version, of course. On the topic of gear, because that the Crimson Dragon, by the mm. way, that first match was awful. He was so bad in that first match with Stars and Jorge, but he was perfectly fine in the second one, so... <laughs> yeah. He did some cool shit, but it was just all sloppy and, like, a little dangerous. But on the topic of gear, one of the premier gear makers in the history of wrestling, Easy Money, showed up on these shows. Yes. And ruled the entire time? Yeah. Easy Money's fucking sick! <laughs> So yeah, Easy Money made his debut, he wrestled Tony Mamaluke, he wrestled in that tag match with Sonny Siaki against Divine Storm, he wrestled Crimson Dragon, so... And he had a squash against Alex Winters. Actually, I liked Alex Winters too. Uh, yeah, sorry, Siaki was the one that wrestled Dragon, Easy Money wrestled yes. Alex Winters, as I'm getting my X-Division yeah. squashes mixed up. I gotta say, I enjoyed the Alex Winters performance too. 
Yeah, easy money, really good in these shows. Hitting buckshot lariats and yeah. cool power moves. He's a power junior, and again, there's nothing better in wrestling. You can't beat a power junior. Or as uh, Tanae was calling them before, uh, a hybrid athlete that can go between the heavyweights and the extra. Oh, he didn't use the word hybrid, he used a different word. What was the different word? He said, tweener. <laughs> Tweener, yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> he's like, he was he's talking specifically about Siaki. It's like Siaki is almost one of those tweeners, Mike Tanay said, referring to the well known wrestling expression of the person who definitely moves between the X division and the heavyweight division. Yeah. Which is I thought that was a fun little uh, nod. I wonder if it was a purposeful thing. Where he's trying to like claim back the meaning of tweener. Yeah. I wonder if um that was ever like something they were seriously considering considering making like part of the TNA vernacular. Like, oh, we have these guys that go in between the heavyweight stuff and the X Division, you know? Because I'd imagine they were looking at AJ Styles at the moment in particular as a guy who's like, this guy is going to win the heavyweight title at some stage. He, he definitely is. So maybe we have to establish this idea that these people are on the level of the heavyweight, which is, to be fair, a thing they were doing with, like, the Jerry Lynn and Ron Killing stuff. Like, Ron, Jerry Lynn pinned the NWA champion. Well, Siaki does has been doing it too, but he also gets beat up a lot, so it's like... Mm. Was Kid Cash not on this fucking... He did, yeah, he was. He was, a, he was in the Elimination Tables match. Mm-hmm. Which he won. Which was insane. As mad as an elimination tables match between Kid Cash, Jose, Joel, Maximo, Ace Steel, and Tony Mameluke sounds. <laughs> and then he also had the triple threat with Styles and Lynn. Yeah, it was a fun little match. Which, I, I, honestly, I agree, it was a fun little match. Veered on disappointing, though. Also, I was just disappointed that fucking Lynn snuck his fucking way in there. I just wanted a cool AJ Styles Kid Cash match. Styles was the one that snuck his way in there. Oh, sorry, yeah, other way around. Yeah, yeah, I just, whatever. I wanted the singles match with Kid Cash, and I, and I remember I was really amped for it, too. I was like, oh, fuck yeah. An exhibition title match with, uh, that has Kid Cash in it? Yeah. And Styles was like, doo, 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 doo. I was like, no. Damn you, Mortimer Plumtree, and your great lawyering skills. Yeah, he's a good manager. He's representing his client you well. You the Nerd. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we have to talk about it We now that we're in the X Division. So on the, the, the start of the NWA TNA pay-per-view number 22, November 13th, AJ Styles comes out and he cuts a promo and he's talking about how he should be put in the X Division match. It's very weird, actually, to see these shows open with a promo. It's like very... Yeah. It, it, you feel, again, the Vince Russo influence seeping in with them opening with a guy coming to the ring and cutting a promo. A- AJ's in the ring, cutting his promo. He calls Mike Tanay for some reason, Sugar Tit Tanay. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> and then Jerry Lynn comes out, interrupts them, and he's like, Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses there, Mr. Cocks his head to the side, pauses for for a moment. Nerd, is it? That's right. <laughs> and yeah, Mike Tanae's like, That's right. And Don's like, Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, like, the Mr. Nerd line is obviously tremendous. One of the best things I've ever seen in my yep. life. But the thing that really sells that clip to me is Mike Tanae's emphatic, That's right. He's like, fuck yeah, that is Mr. Nerd. You got him. That is Mr. Nerd. He has been owned. <laughs> That's right. And the pride and satisfaction on Jerry Lynn's face when he says Mr. Nerd. It's so good. I love it so much. It's such a lame line. And Jerry uh, Lynn makes it the best line in the history of the world. Shout out to Jerry Lynn for responding to that tweet too. Yeah, Jerry Lynn responded to us on Twitter with a nerd gif. He is the fourth, wait, no, the fourth or the fifth? He's either the fourth or the fifth person followed on the account now. Yeah, Jerry Lynn deserves it for his sick Mr. Nerd line, which is officially added yeah. to the, the, the intro of the episode. This is our Hall of Fame. Yeah, this this, this <laughs> is how we immortalize people in TNA canon. 